In 1947, the inevitable occurred. Shepherds found a library of scroll jars containing scripture in a cave by the Dead Sea. In modern Qumran, with mostly scroll fragments, many scribed on leather. But Qumran is a new name. Do we know its ancient name? Actually, yes, we do. And we'll cover that, and it unveils so much. Up until that point, the oldest copies of the Bible, either in part or in whole, that we had were from the 9th century A.D. forward. When you hear someone say the original Hebrew or Greek or even Aramaic, including us, they are actually referring to one of these texts from 900 A.D., the Masoretic text, typically. Because there are none that we knew of before that, until 1947. That was 70 years ago. So today, we've incorporated these into Bible translations and learned much from them, right? Well, not really. Unfortunately, that has not happened, even remotely to the degree that it should. Why? Why are most churches still programming us to reject those Dead Sea Scrolls before even researching them? Do they not know at least portions of every book of the Bible, except Esther, were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls? Some in whole? Yes, those are inspired and canon which is the typical programmed response we all immediately spit out whenever we hear Dead Sea Scrolls. Are they inspired? Are they canon? Well, yes. And actually, we're going to take that to another level. Because we're going to answer that across the board as a yes. There are other books and writings within the Dead Sea Scrolls in which were found with Scripture even in the same scroll jars. John the Baptist lived in what we call Qumran today, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And by the way, that's where they were found. They weren't found further down. There were a few found in the next town down. There were none found in Ein Gedi, none found in Masada, none found north of the Dead Sea. Yet, if you look at the map from Israel Antiquities Authority, they show all those locations. But they didn't find Dead Sea Scrolls in all those locations. They found them principally in Qumran and nowhere else. Now, we don't find the word Qumran in the Bible because it is a new name of no significance. It is not the ancient one, but we can know that name. It's rather odd that scholars have ignored this simple, clear evidence and propagated a completely unsupported theory that a pagan cult called the Essenes lived in Qumran. No, they did not. History tells us exactly where they lived, and it was not Qumran. And it's clear. We're not stretching anything to get to either of these conclusions. It's right there in plain language. But the Bible tells us who did live there in modern Qumran. For those trying to deceive people that John the Baptist and even Yahusha, Jesus, were connected to the Essenes somehow is sheer ignorance. And we will call that what it is, because that is a disgusting proposition. They take broad strokes like the Essenes believed in an afterlife. Oh, Jesus and John believed in an afterlife. Their views on that are opposites. When you break it down, others say John and Jesus believed in the Messiah. Duh. And the Essenes believed in a Messiah. So, see, they must be the same. That's stupid. These two groups were on polar opposite ends of that spectrum. The Essene Messiah was not Jesus. If it was, they would have embraced him, wouldn't they? And they did not. As we said, only stupidity, sorry for the word, but 
We are going to deal with the Essenes, including their location, beliefs, symbols, writings, which were not the Dead Sea Scrolls. They identify the Essenes by the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is circular reasoning. Because first you got to prove they ever lived there, and they did not, even on the evidence that they're using, which we're going to use their own evidence against them. We'll know their alliances. We'll know who they were by the end of this series. And we will prove their connection to Kabbalah, not Judaism, Kabbalah. They were not keepers of the library of the Old Testament, which is what was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Their library was in Alexandria, Egypt, and it contained their Gospels, which we call, appropriately, the Gnostic Gospels. Those are twisted manipulations of the word, which we were warned about. And no Gnostic Gospels were found at Qumran, which is a telling sign that that was not their library. This should be obvious, yet we continue to hear this, don't we? Why? For now, let's jump in and see what the Bible says about exactly where John the Baptist operated, as well as the exact location of Yahushua's, Jesus' baptism, which is not where you are told on the tourist visits to Israel to the dirty, muddy Jordan River. Wrong place, and we'll prove it. We'd say those scholars don't seem to be able to read, but that's not the case. Instead, they are laughing at the Goyim who don't know the Bible. Well, no longer. Here we go. Before we go into John, let's set the foundation for the breakout of territories in this time frame, which is well documented by history and not something to be argued with, really. Because many confuse Herod the Great, who was governor of Judea at the time of Yahushua's, Jesus' birth, with his sons, Herod Antipas and Herod Archelaus. However, Herod the Great died in 4 BC, which means Yahushua, Jesus, was born before 6 BC, at least as the wise men arrived about two years after his birth, which we cover in part 11 of Solomon's Gold series, and met Herod the Great, not his son, Herod the Great, who died in 4 BC, because you'll see that is the Herod, Herod the Great, who dies while Yahushua, Jesus, is in Egypt. So he had to have been born, Yahushua, Jesus, at least two years prior to Herod's death, and more likely longer than that. So, any Bible timeline that has Yahushua born after 6 BC is just plain wrong, according to the Bible, by default. Because he could not have been born after Herod's death. So when you look at the Stellarium program, which says that he, that the stars formed the way that they supposedly formed in 3 BC or whatever it was, the date's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. (laughs) The Bible is right. Stellarium is wrong. Period. There's no other way to look at that. It must match the Bible. If it doesn't match the Bible, it's wrong. And that's in all cases, including science. So, any Bible timeline that has Yahushua born after 6 BC, absolutely wrong. Throw it out. No matter where it came from, doesn't matter. I don't care how big the minister was. Go read the Bible. If it doesn't match the Bible, if it goes against the Bible, it's wrong. And that's what the Bible says. Because he could not have been born after Herod's death, And one must leave the two-year window for the wise men, which we cover, came from where? Ophir, Sheba, Tarshish, and Seba, according to Psalm 72. It's right there in the Bible. It's right there. So anybody that says they came from any place else, as Babylon has never been identified as one of those four areas. Never. There is no correlation to any other area. It has to be Ophir, Sheba, Tarshish, and Seba. Now, you want to argue or debate on where those things are? Okay, fine. That's fair. But no one has ever argued that Ophir was in Babylon. No one, because it could not be. So, anyway, 
we prove that those four areas are, in fact, what we call modern-day Philippines in Solomon's Gold Series. The record of Herod's death is well recorded and not disputed from any reputable source that we have found. So, let's read further. When he, Joseph, father of Yahushua Jesus, arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt, and was there in Egypt until the death of Herod, which Herod, Herod the Great, but we'll see. So Herod the Great died. How do we know it was Herod the Great? But when he heard that Archelaus, that's Herod Archelaus, son of Herod the Great, did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. And notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, Yahuwah, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So Herod the Great is only referenced at the birth of Messiah and two years after, and then he dies in 4 BC. Okay, so again, anything after that, wrong. And Herod Archelaus becomes king of Judea at that point. And as you can see on the map, Herod the Great's other son is also named Herod Antipas. That's the Herod that is mentioned as taking the wife of his brother Philip that beheads John the Baptist for criticizing him. Or today we would call that judging what John did, yet we don't understand We are to judge, especially ministries and leaders, absolutely judge. By not judging them, we end up in a massive deception, which we are in today. And the same Herod Antipas is the governor of Perea near John and Galilee, where Yahushua, Jesus, grew up which is why he is mentioned again in the story where Pontius Pilate says to take Yahushua Jesus to Herod, which was appropriate. You can see the two territories of Herod Antipas and the territory of Judea for Archelaus. Some of you may have known this, but we are laying foundation to ensure the geography is accurate and clear. Later on, any reference to the Jordan in this era could refer to the Jordan River, but what scholars completely seem to forget is when river is not specified, it could also refer to the Jordan Valley, which in that era was on both sides of the Jordan River. A reference to the Jordan would mostly include both sides of the Jordan, the plains of the Jordan as well. So if something is beyond Jordan, for instance, which we'll cover, it is beyond that area, not within it. That seems basic, but watch how this is really confused by scholars. The Bible is far simpler than it has been given credit. We just have to read it. And stop adding words and restore what it actually says. We will. Also, note the wilderness in these days is not the wilderness in which the Israelites wandered. And it is not the banks of the Jordan. And the wilderness of Judea is always in the same spot, on the west side of the Dead Sea. Nowhere else. There is no other wilderness of Judea. This is where... Yahushua, Jesus, headed after he was baptized and was tempted by Satan, meaning he was baptized near or in that area. And we will prove he most certainly was. He was not where they are baptizing tourists today in the muddy Jordan River. And one other geographic marker to be aware of in this era is the Jordan. When scholars see the Jordan, they immediately assume it only refers to the Jordan River. However, in Abraham and Lot's day, all of the plain of Jordan 
was named as Juan. Yes, the Jordan River runs through the center of it. However, the plain that surrounds the river on both sides is still the Jordan. It's the Jordan Valley. In Joshua's day, the Israelites had to cross the Jordan River to reach the Promised Land, which was known as Canaan because Canaan, son of Ham, stole that territory from Shem's descendants all the way to Abraham. And then... We had the tribes of Israel, which the nation of Israel included the territory of Gad on the east of the Jordan River. And Ephraim and Manasseh, Benjamin and Issachar had the western side, as it was one nation. The Jordan could refer to the river, certainly, but could also refer to the plain of Jordan as in Genesis. So the Jordan Valley surrounds the Jordan River to form the Jordan. And in the days of John the Baptist and Yahusha, Jesus, you can see the very same scenario. Again, one could say the Jordan could mean the Jordan River. However, if any area is beyond Jordan, it is not just beyond the Jordan River. In the eastern Jordan Valley especially, it makes no sense. Mary went to visit Elizabeth and Zacharias before the birth of John the Baptist in the hill country of Judea. Where's that? Basically the hills that run parallel to the Dead Sea between Jerusalem and the Dead Sea. Why not the entire mountain range throughout all of Judea? When you get above the Dead Sea, the name changes to the hill country of Ephraim, and then Samaria, or Manasseh. So John was born and raised not far from the Dead Sea. No, that doesn't prove anything yet. But wait. Wait till you see what we found in plain view that is just plain ignored. Just who was John the Baptist? Much more than a Baptist. And he had nothing to do with the founding of the Baptist denomination, no. Luke says, now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Now we know who Tiberius Caesar was, and he's very well documented. We know exactly when his reign started and exactly when it ended. So this tells us the exact year that John started his ministry. He reigned from 14 A.D. to 37 A.D. So the 15th year, and you would start counting with 14 as the number 1, was 28 A.D. That's when John's ministry began publicly. Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, note, on the map, Pilate replaced Herod Archelaus, which is why he presided over the crucifixion of Yahusha, Jesus, and not a Herod. And Herod being Tetrarch of Galilee. Now, this is why this Herod is Herod Antipas, the same as before that we showed you, who not only has Galilee as his territory, but also Perea, which means that he encounters Yahusha, because he's in the area where Yahusha grew up, which is why Pilate sent Yahusha Jesus to Herod to be judged, rather than judging him initially himself. Yet at the same time, he was the Tetrarch of Perea, which is just over the Jordan River that you see on the map there, the two orange spots. And his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Ituria, and of the region Trachonitis and Licinius, the Tetrarch of Abilene. Now, we know Philip because Herod Antipas took Philip's wife. So that's what John the Baptist criticized him for, in fact. Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priests of the temple, of course, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, John the Baptist, in the wilderness. So where is John all this time? He's in the wilderness. In the wilderness of the Jordan? No. In the wilderness of Judea. He went to the wilderness, desert, same word. The wilderness is the desert. But read on. 
and he came into all the country about Jordan. If he came into the country, which includes all the area around the river, the valleys and the river, all named what? Jordan. He was not in Jordan at that time. Right? Where did he come from? From the wilderness of Judea. What wilderness then did he come from? The wilderness of Judea, just south of the Jordan. What did John do? He preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So he was far more than a Baptist, wasn't he? This would make him a preacher of righteousness, correct? Or how about the title, teacher of righteousness? Hmm, yes. Remember that term because scholars really don't seem to understand that one. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Yahusha, make his paths straight. Where is the voice of John the prophet calling? In the wilderness. Did he stop crying when he was beheaded? No. The Greek word used for wilderness both times in this passage is eremos. 32 times it's translated as wilderness and 13 as desert. In other words, the desert wilderness. The two are one. Which one is right next to the hill country where John was raised? The wilderness of Judea. But this is even further identified. Matthew tells us where John resided. Which wilderness? He nails it down and tells it's the wilderness of Judea. Where specifically is that wilderness? Because it has historical boundaries and we have known them all along. Yet, many scholars seem to confuse them. Perhaps they would admit they are not geographers, understandably, but that doesn't dismiss ignorance. And that's what this is. So, Where is the wilderness of Judea according to ancient maps? And Yahushua Jesus came from Galilee, where he was from, and he went to John to be baptized of him. Where did he go? To Jordan. Does it say he was baptized in the Jordan River? No. What's Jordan again? It's the river and valley or plains that surround it, not just the river. However, John provides even more detail to say the Jordan Valley region is not being specific enough. Matthew was generalizing here, which is fine, and he's accurate, but John clarifies and details this further in a very credible way. This is why we cannot just look at one passage when a story exists, especially like this, as important as John the Baptist was. He's in all four Gospels in different forms. And then take one, just one of them, and draw conclusions. You need to look at them all. It takes all of them to understand. And the one with the most detail is going to be what should be preferred in answering the questions. Where did John operate and where was Jesus Yahusha baptized? What have modern scholars done? Take a tour in Israel and get baptized in the supposed location where John baptized Yahusha Jesus. That location is a joke. According to the Bible and history, and now you're going to see why? John one twenty eight. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Now this is talking about the uh, baptism of Yahusha, Jesus, in Bethabara. So where's Bethabara? This should be simple, right? But not to scholars. Very close to, but beyond Jordan. That's what it says. It says beyond Jordan, right? So it's not in Jordan. It's beyond Jordan. But wait a minute. Don't the other passages say it's in Jordan? Mm, Not actually. No, they're just not being as specific. Now we're getting very specific, and you'll see this is on the border of 
the wilderness of Judea and the Jordan. So, but we'll, we'll specify that a little further. Bethabara means house at the crossing place. This is where scholars go in a wild goose chase to find a place where one can cross the Jordan without even bothering to look at the width of the Jordan River, where it meets the Dead Sea especially. They ignore actual historic maps as well. This is how scholarship, science, and even archaeology work today. Each discipline stays mostly within its discipline and does not bother to apply the other disciplines, which have further evidences to help them, but they just don't cross that line. Well, they should. They should cross all the lines because they should look at all the proof and all the evidence in order to draw even a theory. But they don't do that, do they? You will see they really miss this one. And it's not that hard to find. Notice, we are not looking for a city here, but an isolated house at the place of crossing the Jordan River. Okay, here we go. The Greek word used for beyond is translated accurately. It means other side, beyond, over, farther side. That settles it. It must be the eastern side of the Jordan River then, right? Wrong. Here's Wikipedia's definition of Jordan, however. Unlike most other river valleys, note river valleys, The term Jordan Valley often applies just to the lower course of the Jordan River, from the spot where it exits the Sea of Galilee in the north to the end of its course where it flows into the Dead Sea in the south, so that area in between, on both sides, to the east and west. So if Jordan refers, yes, to the river, but also the valley, then where's beyond Jordan? Where was Yahushua Jesus coming from? He was coming from the north in Galilee, as we saw earlier. So what would be the accurate way to say he went from Galilee to beyond Jordan? Well, he would enter from the north, coming into the Jordan, the Jordan Valley. He didn't swim in the river. And he would head where? South. And as he's heading south, because that's his journey, he would end up south of the Jordan River and Valley. Otherwise, he would have to go much further to the east into the modern country of Jordan, far away from the river. And that would not be identified as Jordan, and yet beyond Jordan at the same time. Which actually is a clue in all of this. It's not a mistake. So, what would fit that description? Just on the eastern side of the Jordan River. So, they lived on the eastern side. There, they identify Bethabara. The exact Greek word used in John, with a picture of one house, a singular house. How about that? House of the crossing? Yes. What side of the Jordan River is Bethabara? What's on the western side? So it's not east of it, and they would know, because they're on the east side, aren't they? And would be... Happy to take credit for Yahushua, Jesus getting baptized over there instead of on the western side, but that would be incorrect, wouldn't it? So it's not east, it's west. Bethabara, which is the New Testament Greek word, mind you, is the same as the Old Testament Betharaba in Hebrew. According to biblicaltraining.org, It is a scriptural correction in Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet in Hebrew. It renders it Betharaba. So Bethabara is Betharaba. Bethabara, Betharaba are the same. Joshua identifies this, though, 
So we don't want to leave you hanging with just a website. Joshua identifies this as the same area, and we'll show you. Joshua writes, in the wilderness, Betharaba, remember, Bethabara in Greek, same word, Midden and Sikaka and Nibshan and the city of Salt, where are we? On the Dead Sea, of course. And and Gedi, where are we? On the Dead Sea, of course. Six cities with their villages. What's Joshua referring to here? This is the Dead Sea area on the west side, known as the wilderness of Judea. He's identifying the areas that exist within that wilderness area. Wilderness doesn't mean uninhabited, by the way, which is what we always assume. He starts with the northernmost area of Bethabara, Betharaba, and works his way down the coast of the Dead Sea. Let's look at more maps, and you'll see this at least with a few of these references. Ein Gedi. That is the home of the Essenes. Really, nowhere near Qumran or Bethabara. There are five cities between Bethabara and Ein Gedi, or four. Even in Joshua's day, and they grew since then. So, if someone says... I don't know, like, I don't know, uh, Pliny the Elder, maybe, the historian and geographer, that the Essenes lived above Ein Gedi. He doesn't mean five cities and 25 miles to the north of it, does he? After all, he was a geographer. He kind of knew better. Now, let's move on. After these things came... Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. So they entered Judea, not Perea, on the east side of Jordan. No, on the west side. And there he tarried with them and baptized. Many miss this. Yahusha Jesus baptized. Neat. And John also, both of them, awesome. That would have been an amazing time. John also was baptizing in Aenon near to Selene because there was much water there. Big clue. And they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples, these are John's disciples now, and the Jews, so the Pharisees, who were there, about purifying. Why purifying? We'll show you this is a focus of some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and John the Baptist is the writer of those, at least those portions, and he practiced purifying rituals. Why? First, because his father was a temple priest of Abia, and his mother, a daughter of Aaron founder of the Levite high priest, which John was qualified for. But he wrote that he did not go to the temple because it had been defiled. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, talking to John here, and referencing the guy he baptized and identified as Messiah beyond Jordan. Where are they, or where were they at that point? They were beyond Jordan, not in Jordan. Not for that portion. At Bethabara, modern-day Qumran. To whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes. Yahushua Jesus was baptizing, see? And all men come to him. Now John goes on here to identify Yahushua Jesus as the Messiah, and he is happy to fall into his shadow anytime. John was a great man, far more than just a Baptist. It's really a bad title when you think about it. He called the nation of Israel by the thousands to repentance and prepared their hearts to receive Messiah. He is equated even by Yahushua, Jesus, among the greatest of all prophets. 
Yet we are to believe John left us nothing? Was it not the voice crying in the wilderness in 1947 yet again? Yet we continue to question whether we should even read the materials he left behind in his library. Now, where were they at this point? They were in Anon and Selim, which is in Selim. Now, Selim is the word for springs. So, Anon means springs. Some have supposed the site to be northeast of Shechem and seven miles north of a village now called Selim, the later being three miles east of Shechem. Three miles southwest of this, no wonder nobody reads what these scholars have to say. Couldn't they make it easy? (laughs) Three miles southwest of this supposed site of Anan are several springs in a valley. These coincidences have led some to place Anan here. But both the word Selim and that four springs are among the most common. There is another Selim, or name of similar form, in the wadi of that name, three to four miles northeast of Jerusalem, and very much water flowing from one large spring, and several others. Note, the passage identifies this spring, which had very much water. So that's the one, not the others. And yes, there's many named Selim. That's a common name, just means springs. So that's the one. Two miles northeast at Ein Farah. Therefore, as that immense spring supply, as Dr. Barclay describes it, suggests the word springs, or Anon, and the name suggests the name Selim of John, it has been located at this place with far greater probability. For the former place was in Samaria, which is ridiculous because Samaria is nowhere near the wilderness of Judea, nor could it ever be the Jordan necessarily, and the latter in Judah. Now, from John 3, 22 and 23, it appears that both Jesus and John were baptizing in Judea. No, it doesn't appear they were. And their proximity to each other gave occasion to the remarks recorded in the 25th verses. Verse, then it appears that Jesus left Judea for Galilee in chapter 4, verse 1. Well, actually, he's got the verse wrong, but it, it's okay. Uh, he's very close. So, Anon is three to four miles northeast of Jerusalem. Not that far, necessarily, but obviously this was an outpost where John was also baptizing. But notice, not in the Jordan River. In the Jordan, but not the Jordan River. It was still on the Judean side of the Jordan River, not the Purian side, not the east side. That is completely wrong. And this was a spring not in the Jordan River. Only one time does Mark, and he's the only one that mentions, that John baptized people in the Jordan River. Not at the time where Yahushua, Jesus, was baptized, by the way. But the other references, including the baptism of Yahushua, Jesus, and his disciples were both in fresh water, not the muddy waters of the Jordan. But this scholar uses tentative language here, so we must make clear what the Bible says. When he says it appears he left Judea, and his verse is wrong as well. No, he doesn't appear to. He says it. John 4, 3 through 5. He, Yahushua, Jesus, left Judea. Is that a maybe? No. And departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. So, no, it does not appear... It is fact, he left Judea, exact words. But why are we told Yahushua, Jesus, and his disciples were baptized in the Jordan River? 
Even scripture tells us that the Jordan is incredibly muddy and not considered to be an optimal place in which to baptize people. And they would have known that. Here's what people thought of the Jordan River in ancient times. Let's look at 2 Kings 5, 9 through 12. I'll read it quickly here. This is about Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan several times. See, Naaman was a leper. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, angry, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought, he will surely come out to me and stand, and call on the name of the Lord its God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Now, he did eventually wash in the Jordan and he was healed. But the point is the mentality of many was the Jordan River is a very muddy river and not considered clean because of that. Why would John force everyone to go into the Jordan River when he had fresh springs in which he could operate and a compound in which he lived, which we will show you had lots of water and a large baptismal. Where does faith come from? Knowing him and his word, hearing and hearing by the word of Yahuwah, God. We must know him because that is all that matters. And if in fact the library of John the Baptist, one of the greatest prophets, was found in Qumran, well, Bethabara, to be accurate in history, then we want to know all there is to know about those writings. There are books found in the Dead Sea Scrolls that are summarily dismissed, that have massive revelation. So, the Old Testament the oldest canon of scripture, of the Old Testament scripture, was indeed compiled by John the Baptist. Not just arbitrary writings of pagan Essenes. This is the issue of our day. Restoring Yahuwah God's word and understanding exactly what the God culture really is.